Alrighty, so having recently made a video on badly designed abilities, I noticed a few comments asking me what I think makes a well-designed ability. By the way, thank you so much for the amazing viewership on that video. It was my first one ever to break 100,000 views in a single day, which is just astounding. Alongside this episode, you'll be happy to know that a part 2 will be coming out, should be releasing maybe a week or two after this one. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the inverse topic. The community loves to complain about broken or unfair abilities all the time, but we almost never think about abilities that are really cool to use or interesting to go up against. I figure it's worth giving credit where credit is due, so let's spend some time today and talk about some of the best designed abilities in League of Legends. Actually, before we do, time to talk about today's sponsor, Buff, which is making a return once again. Buff is a program associated with Overwolf, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. What it does is it lets you earn reward points while playing games like League, Valorant, Fortnite, Dota, PUBG, and many more. While playing the game, you can complete certain challenges, kind of like the mission section of the game client, and as you earn points, you can exchange them for things like Riot Points, Steam Credit, Gift Cards, Skins, In-Game Keys, or if you save up a bunch, you can get your hands on physical items like peripherals such as keyboards and gaming mice, which I think is the best part about it. From my experience, other rewards apps only give you digital goods. It's a really simple program that requires nothing other than downloading it to your overwolf and you can get right to playing and earning points. So for you free-to-play players out there who want to get skins but don't want to spend money and Hextech Crafting is not doing it for you, then check the link on screen which is also in the description below. Thanks once again to Buff for sponsoring the video. While it's easy to spot attacks or spells that are nothing but a blight on the world, it can be difficult to figure out the other way around. Usually you can tell if an ability is badly designed if it feels useless or annoying to use for the one piloting the champ, or if it feels unfair or oppressive for the one going against it. Bringing back the example of Jax's Counter-Strike, AD carry mains will curse this ability for as long as they live, because not only does it give Jax 2 seconds of total immunity to basic attacks, which makes up a good 90% of marksman damage, but he deals more damage based on how many attacks were blocked with a 1 second stun, all while he's able to auto-attack you for free during that time. And there's nothing you can do about it other than to try to get out of his range and buy some time. An ability that feels bad to use would be something like Blitzcrank's Overdrive. Sure, it gives a pretty substantial boost to your movement and attack speed, but then he's hit with a 30% slow for 1.5 seconds, as if his W was too powerful and needed a drawback to using. You can straight up remove the slow and no one would notice except the Blitzcrank player. That's because of negativity bias. Not to get too much into psychology, but we as humans have a natural tendency to notice negative things over positive ones. On average, it takes 3 things of equal goodness to cancel out one bad thing. This is especially prevalent in video games and more specifically in UX design, also known as user experience. We only ever notice something bad happening because what's done well is expected as the bare minimum, so to speak. In that sense, there's absolutely no semblance of objectivity when it comes to what is a good designed ability because video games are graded on a point deduction basis, where they start with a score of 100 but lose points for every infraction. So here are two things I thought of for my list. 1. The ability has dynamic usage. Not to confuse this with overloaded champions, generally I like spells that force the player to make a choice because that adds an element of skill expression. Bit of a hot take, but let's use Singed his Mega Adhesive as an example. I'm not sure if I'll release this video before or after the Swain retrospective, but basically I'm using the same example for the sake of continuity. Mega Adhesive is a very simple ability. Singe creates a puddle of sticky goo that greatly slows and grounds enemies caught in it. But if he flings a target into the puddle, they're rooted for up to 2 seconds. The catch is that most of the time you can't do both of them. You can either only use his W to slow someone down from afar in order to catch up to them, or lock them down with the root. Chances are, if you're chasing after someone to fling them behind you, you'll be flinging them away from the puddle since they're standing right on it to begin with. That's what I mean by dynamic usage. 2. There is enough visual or temporal clarity to the ability. In other words, the enemy is given some notice that danger is incoming. The Slayer class gets a lot of flack in this department. Since they come at you with blinding speed and rapid fast attacks, players get one-shotted before they even have a chance to assess what is going on. You probably have half a second at best to react to a Shaco popping out of stealth right behind you. In fairness, not all abilities need to hold a big sign and blow an air horn, but major abilities should have an appropriate indicator of some sort. Take for example Scion's Unstoppable Onslaught, it's a very devastating ultimate at full power, something like 1200 damage rank 3 at base, and has a 2.25 second knockup and stun, not to mention how far he can travel with it. When do you know he's using it? Sounds pretty convincing to me. I'm sure I can think of a bunch of other things that make an ability well designed, but to avoid being too confusing, those are the two that I thought of. I should also add, if the ability in and of itself is fun or quirky to use, that can also contribute to the positive experience when playing the champion. I mostly say this because of the first ability I'll talk about in this list, so with that out of the way, let's get started. 
Zack's Elastic Slingshot is one of the most enjoyable abilities in the game. I mean honestly the entire champion, let's be real, he's a sentient blob of goo. One of the coolest champions in the game, everyone knows him for one ability, Elastic Slingshot. He anchors himself and begins stretching his body as long as possible, during which his dash range increases over a cone in a target direction. On release, he literally slingshots himself towards the target location, damaging and knocking up all enemies struck with the knockup duration increasing based on how long he charged for, so there's less CC when used immediately and more CC when held for a long time. Despite being by far the longest non-ultimate or non-global engage tool, no one considers this a busted ability because it's balanced by several metrics, namely its speed. Unless you have wards covering deep within the enemy jungle, it's impossible to see Zack charging up the ability given how much range it covers. But depending on how far he decides to go, you still have a good half a second to a second to see him coming. It's not as fast as Malphite ult, for instance. Secondly, the effect radius itself is actually quite small for this type of ability. As you probably know by now, Zack increases in size the more bonus health he obtains, much like how Cho'Goth becomes chunkier the more times he ults. But unlike Cho'Goth, he gains no increased parameters in range or hitboxes. Elastic Slingshot is an incredibly powerful ability, but every possible way in which it could become overpowered has been suppressed, without detracting from its potential usage. It travels quite a distance, but is easier to dodge the farther he aims. If he uses it point blank, he only gets half the knockup duration. Additionally, he's able to use this in all sorts of funny ways besides simply engaging or escaping. You don't see this happening too often, but there's a trick called the drive-by where Zack smites Baron or Dragon mid-flight without having to actually commit to jumping into the pit. I'm sure many Zack mains could agree with me when I say that his E is the biggest selling point about the guy. He remains to this day one of the best and most consistent engaged champions in League with a very creative engage that's strong where it's allowed to be and balanced where it needs to be. I have always been a fan of champions with funky engage tools that aren't just straight line dashes. You guys saw this one coming, Thresh is widely considered to be the best champion ever designed in League, at least before Jin came along, and even then, I'd still say Thresh is better than Jin, if only by a tiny margin. You can honestly put any of his basic abilities on this list, but Death Sentence is the most iconic one. Hook type abilities are conventionally known for pulling unsuspecting targets away from the safety of their team and closer to yours to make them easier to kill, although this happens in various degrees. Pike's Bone Skewer yanks his catch a fixed distance, Dredge Line causes Nautilus and whoever he caught to meet halfway, and Blitzcrank's Rocket Grab pulls them straight to where he's standing. In contrast, Death Sentence may seem like the weakest hook in terms of displacing his opponent as he tugs on the chain twice to pull them a short distance closer to him. But unlike his peers, the ability gives him not one, but two additional options, lending credence to his dynamic flexibility. For every other hook champion, they have no choice but to act on the immediate target they pulled, for better or worse. Nautilus and Blitzcrank land their target right in front of them, breaking the neutral game and forcing an interaction. Pike, not so much, but he draws most enemies within striking distance, close enough to where he has to decide if he wants to fight or run, and usually burning Ghostwater Dive or Phantom Undertow in the process. Since Thresh only pulls his target slightly, he can safely use his Q in neutral, deciding if the person he caught out is worth engaging on, opening up his second option. He can either use Death Sentence to draw an enemy closer to his team and or to dash towards them, which puts him in a perfect position to then cast Dark Passage, Flay, and set up the box. The four Hope Champions are well loved for their ability to lock down a single target for a very long time, but one weakness exploited very often is how predictable they can be. There's honestly not much else to say about Thresh's hook. It has a ton of flexibility when engaging and has a clear indication that it's coming because of his wind-up animation. Now, when it comes to strictly making picks, Blitzcrank is still the reigning king with his rocket grab, but you cannot discount how good Thresh's death sentence is. So before making the video, I actually posted the thumbnail on my Twitter just to see what people's reactions would be, and the ability that got a lot of mixed responses was Twisted Fate's Pick a Card. By the way, feel free to follow me on Twitter at VarsVerum if you want to catch an occasional sneak peek. I'm aware I treat my community tab like it's Twitter, but I do like to chit chat and hang out just as much on there as well. Back to the topic at hand though, Twisted Fate is a champion I think every mid laner should have in their pool for his amazing macro pressure, and one of the ways he teaches you that apart from his ultimate is his W. Pick a card cycles through three cards, requiring the player to select one to change his next attack into that card. Blue card deals the most damage while refunding the mana cost and change. Red card deals respectable damage to all enemies in a small area and slows them for 2.5 seconds, and his infamous gold card which deals the lowest damage of his three cards but stuns the target for up to 2 seconds. Considering Twisted Fate is often regarded as a stun bot late game, I can see why people might disagree with this ability being one of the best design. But Pick a Card is an ability that can cover a wide array of circumstances, just not all at once. Blue card is to sustain his rather steep mana cost, red card can be used to shove waves or strike clumped up enemies, and gold card is a point and click stun, the implications of that being self-explanatory. 
There's a clear visual indicator on screen of which card he selects, including the cycling through of cards. And contrary to what you might think, there are times where blue card and red card are better to use than gold, even during fights and skirmishes. In all honesty, I'm surprised there aren't more abilities in the game like pick a card or Heimerdinger's upgrade. You know, spells that give you a choice between multiple different things, but you're only allowed to choose one. I do concede that blue card and red card are frequently overshadowed by gold, however, that's not really enough to change the conceptual brilliance of this ability. And like I said, blue and red cards have their own usage since League of Legends isn't only about killing your opponents. On to the next one, Nami. She's got a lot of things going for her, an interesting hybrid between Enchanter and Catcher which you don't see very often even though they're sister classes. Anyway, Ebb and Flow is, in my humble opinion, the best form of support healing out of all the Enchanters, and I'm willing to bet a lot of people don't really know what it does. Here's how it works. Nami unleashes a stream of water onto herself or target champion, ally or enemy. It then bounces up to two nearby champions alternating between enemies and then teamfights and then her. When used on an ally, it heals them, and when used on an enemy, it damages them. You can think of it almost like Bran's ultimate. Naturally, to get the most out of this ability, you have to land all three bounces, so you can get two damages and one heal, or two heals and one damage. I chose this ability because it's a healing ability with actual skill expression involved. Healing has always been something of a cheap mechanic to me, since enchanters with heals would just be able to click their ally and they would heal. At the end of the day, Nami can use Ebb and Flow to give herself or her ally a heal, but it's far weaker than Soraka's Astral Infusion unless you get the double bounce. Players like to think Nami's skill expression comes from her Aqua Prison and Tidal Wave, but I believe her W requires just as much timing and positioning to get the most out of it. I don't have the replay file of when it happened, but there was one time where I was diving the enemy backline as Renekton passed a Volibear who was diving my backline, and as I was about to die, by some cosmic alignment of luck, my Nami was able to use Flash Ebb and Flow on our mid laner, which then max range bounced to Volibear who was between me and the mid laner, which then bounced to me to heal me just enough to survive and get my Gore Drinker. It is a very specific scenario, yes, but Ebb and Flow is one of the few healing and harass type abilities that is well designed. There's a formula to it that's weaker than similar attacks if it hits only one target, but much stronger if it hits three targets. Last, but most certainly not least, Bard's Tempered Fate. I talked about this in my Global Ultimates video, but this is one of the few infinite value ultimates in the game. An infinite value ultimate is an ultimate that doesn't deliver a constant result, which means it can either be completely useless or be the single deciding factor behind a team winning or losing a fight. Bard's Tempered Fate deals no damage, and it's not your conventional hard crowd control either. What it does is apply a Zhonya's Hourglass type stasis to all entities within the zone. Champions, minions, monsters, neutral objectives, even towers. That's it. I'll repeat what I said in that video again. There are so many things you can do with this ultimate. Engage, disengage, lock down, set up a wombo combo, reposition, stall for time, save teammates right before they die to ignite, death mark, or some delayed attack, zone off enemies, cut off escapes, or any situation where having a pause button would be pretty nice. Take any advantage and disadvantage caused by Zonya's Hourglass and give it to a champion who can apply it with or without the consent of his targets and that is Bard's ultimate. Something that powerful can't come without drawbacks, and what a drawback it has. Tempered Fate is balanced by the risk of it screwing you over just as much as it can win you the game. And no, potentially hurting your teammates does not constitute a badly designed ability because Bard's ult is the most true neutral ability in this godforsaken game. It's neither good nor bad for you because it's both good and bad for you, if that makes sense. It is such a weird ability. Almost every other champion's ultimate is a lot of damage, giant crowd control, or some combination of the sort. Yet this one is just AoE Zonya's Hourglass, but it simultaneously does so much, yet so little. I love it. Okay, those are the 5 best designed abilities I can think of. Honorable mentions go to Ash's Hawkshot, Brahm's Unbreakable, Lee Sin's Dragon Rage, Set's Facebreaker, Warwick's Blood Hunt, and... That's probably it. I'm sure I missed one ability or two. Let me know what your guys' 5 best designed abilities are in the comments. This one is heavily opinion based because everyone has their own definitions for what they think is good design or bad design. Like I said for mine, one, if the ability can be used in a lot of different situations without being regarded as an all-purpose get out of jail free card, and two, if the ability has a clear visual or temporal indicator so your opponent can see it coming and react accordingly. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more content like this. Consider following me on Twitter and joining my Discord server, and lastly check out my previous videos on badly designed and overpowered abilities if you haven't yet. Until then, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Take care.